Welcome to another great adventure with members of the Florida Power Boat Club. This is Stu Jones, and uh, we are celebrating 25 years with the club, and uh, no better event than the 25th annual Key West Offshore Poker Run, and we're now presenting segment two. Uh, this event was presented by Mercury Racing, and also with the grand prize sponsor, Off Lease Only, which has a brand new Mustang waiting for some lucky winner down in Key West. Now, for those of you who have been following this series, uh, we're going to recap here quickly where we left off on the last episode. Uh, these lovely ladies were having a nice scenic ride through the Florida Keys on the Wednesday departure group. We had about 35 boats registered on this beautiful November day, and we left them off in Key Largo as we were passing the docks at Gilbert's in Key Largo, heading off for the next 60 miles as we venture towards Marathon, where we're going to have our lunch and fuel stopover for the day. Power boating in paradise is the only thing that comes to mind when I look at this beautiful shot as we cross over Gilbert's in Key Largo when you can see the power boats making their way through Jewfish Creek. They've just run about 50 miles from Miami and the only reason why we're not stopping at Gilbert's right now is because two months earlier we had the Hurricane Irma went through the Florida Keys and did a lot of damage to the docks at Gilbert's and while we could still dock a few boats there we can't dock 35 boats there so unfortunately we're going to have to wave at the guys at Gilbert's as we pass by and continue on our way through the scenic Florida Keys. Getting some spectacular video shots here using our drone. Uh, credit to Travis uh, Nellman for flying this drone here at Gilbert's. He's got about a one mile range and he's standing uh, on the dock at Gilbert's getting these great shots as we catch up to this 52 foot outer limits. Gotta go. A wide range of boats on today's run. Cats, NVs, center consoles and high performance boats. So uh, all three categories uh, covered sport boat performance boat and of course high performance class the guy with the yacht there well he's just tagging along for the ride The fuel docks remain open at Gilbert's for those who do want to stop in and squirt a little bit of fuel, and that's the way it's going to remain for the next several months. I know at this time, as we produce this video, they're still having trouble getting their permits and getting that project started. So in the meantime, for most of our poker runs, we're going to have to pass by and find some alternate destinations for having lunch as we venture into the Florida Keys. Meanwhile, I would say that for any spectators and people who like to uh, take photos and just kind of follow the poker run, this is probably one of the best places to stop. The Tiki Bar remains open, so you can stop and have a beverage and a nice lunch. Get your cameras out and look at you've got all the boats funneling right through here, uh, through the channel in Jewfish Creek and making their way into Blackwater Sound. Look at the weather today. Look at how blue the skies are. Very, very light winds. And the temperatures, I recall, were already well into the 80s, so we're getting really unseasonable temperatures temperatures, which would normally be more into the 70s, but most of these teams are from up north and they're saying, hey, bring it on. We love it, Mother Nature. Give us the 80s. We'll take it. This is probably a great time to start introducing some of our teams today, starting off with David Berg from Texas, a 43-foot Midnight Express with Quad Mercury 350 Verados, and it also is the platform for Team FPC today. I jumped on board with the girls uh, Kayla and Rochelle and uh, Ryan doing some video. We know how to pick our platform. This big stout center console was a perfect way to ride down to the Keys today. 
Say hi to Justin Bolsma from Michigan, another poker run veteran with the club. Comes a long way to attend in this 38 foot power quest. Interesting numbers. Uh, it's a 1997 boat, one of the oldest on the run. And he at 27, Justin is the youngest captain on the poker run today. Plan on seeing a lot of big outer limits on this run today. And look at that rooster tail from Stephen and Ashley Rack in their 52-foot outer limits twin Mercury Racing dual cal, 1350, 1550. A very popular motor. Plan on seeing more of that QC4 platform because Mercury is loving it, and so are you guys. Uh, pushing this big 52-foot outer limits to probably speeds near 140. Of course, they're just chilling out today and enjoying the scenic ride through the Florida Keys. And this is why we kind of put the word chill at the top of our priority going through the Upper Keys. It's really just a scenic ride uh, through these wandering mangroves uh, from bay to bay. And this is the place to sit back, enjoy the ride, enjoy the scenery, space it out and make safety a top priority. Remember, we're sharing these waterways with a lot of other boaters. Uh, you know, a lot of fishing people, a lot of uh, kayaks and paddle boards and uh, people just out doing scenic rides and eco tours. So we've just got to chill out here as we enjoy our ride through the Upper Keys. We'll have plenty of time to go faster uh, later in the run. Another big Outer Limits, uh, this one at 51. Jim Schultz, uh, who came here as a sponsor with Factory Billet Team. They've got some new Factory Billet power under the hatches. We're going to get a closer look at those later in the show. Meanwhile, here's a third Outer Limits team. These guys are sticking together as they weave their way through the Florida Keys and a lot of Outer Limits represented on this run today. And of course, the cats are running together today. A beautiful rooster tail coming off the back of Chris Bradley's skater. And uh, here's one of our MTI participants. Uh, hard to acknowledge who they are. Once again, the decals not displayed on the boat. Guys, I want to ask you, when you attend the Key West Poker Run or any event, we give you these decals on the front and for the sides of the boat. Uh, up here in the helicopter, the boats kind of all look the same. The guys are up here doing the best they can. They're trying to identify your boats, and when you don't have your decals, it's hard for the guys in the studio later to put the pieces of the puzzle together. So please put your decals out there, and, uh, and you know, that keeps us more organized, and that's all we care about is keeping organized so you guys get proper credits when you attend and register for our events. Look at how great the conditions are today. Bay waters here in the Upper Keys. This is about as choppy as it's gonna get today. Remember, we're traveling on the uh, Florida Bay side of the Florida Keys. We're not really gonna see or touch the ocean for quite some time, not until we get past Marathon later in the ride. And here's a better shot now of Chris and Angela Bradley in their new 388 skater. Uh, three years in the making for this boat. Uh, a lot of uh, key and very unique features, uh, starting with those Goodwin Competition 1940 horsepower aside. Uh, very unique boat, only two boats in the club that carry these Goodwin Competition engines. And therefore, like many other skaters in the Florida Powerboat Club, this one is truly one of a kind. Team Rainmaker, uh, Chris and Angela Bradley, all the way from Texas, and they've been Key West Poker Run veterans for many years. I've lost count, but good to have you guys back and putting on a great show here on the Bay Waters.
And for a different approach to owning a Cataran, this brand new MTI 44, uh, one of the new models came out about a year ago, uh, one of Derek Wacom's boats. He's got three boats registered for the run today. Uh, this one, the Diamond Express, is a 34 MTI with Mercury Racing Verado 400Rs, the ideal package. I'm pretty sure that when MTI designed this boat, they were creating an entry-level MTI for the guys who didn't want to start with a big 48 or 52. But I think that the Black Diamond team started a new trend because they actually built this 34 to be a sister ship to the big 52, uh, carrying fuel on board. And now we've got Johnny O'Laughlin, who's got a matching 34 and a 48 MTI also. So kind of a cool trend starting to happen here in the club. Back to the V-bottoms, uh, this is Dr. Eno Halegua from Miami. A lot of cigarettes represented on the run today. Overall on the roster, about 22 registered cigarettes over the Wednesday and the Thursday departure. Dr. Eno's done this run many, many years. He's from Miami. In fact, a few years back, he won the grand prize Mustang. Climbing up to a few hundred feet here for this nice beauty shot as we pull wide, uh, you can see a few distinctive uh, traits here. First of all, you see that little sandbar off to the port. You don't see that very easily, uh, you know, when you're on the surface, so it's important to watch those charts. You'll see there's a marker there, a green marker, but uh, when you're paying attention, you'll never have problems, but when you don't pay attention, that's when you get in trouble. Here we are now at Ferro Blanco. It's going to be our lunch and fuel stop for both Wednesday and for Thursday. I always recommend, guys, if you don't like crowds, go on the earlier day because you're not going to have so much of a lineup for the fuel, for the, especially for the racing fuel. We've got VP Race Fuel on board with their tanker both days to supply us with the high-octane fuel needs of these high-performance engines. Meanwhile, of course, Ferro Blanco has its fuel pumps open for regular fuel, and uh, there's the Lighthouse Grill. Uh, which is going to provide a great lunch and a lot of comments, uh, a lot of feedback that they did a fantastic job with the lunch. Uh, we paid a little more than we normally do for the lunches for you guys, and it paid off because everyone said, wow, Stu, fantastic lunch. Uh, they did a great job and, uh, you know, very impressed overall. It's easy to see that this Ferro Blanco resort was built with the boater in mind and it soon became a very, very popular stopover for all kinds of boaters, whether they're transient boaters, yacht clubs, powerboat clubs, and now it's in high demand. Of course, the Florida Powerboat Club was the first organization to reopen Ferro Blanco in early 2015. We were the first club here in January then when we did the winter poker run. We returned again in 2016 and uh, decided to move our Miami Boat Show poker run here last year. Uh, but we kind of overwhelmed uh, the staff and the other customers with having such a big power boating event here in February. And we decided to take a year off for 2018 and uh, kept their Miami Boat Show poker run local. Meanwhile, Ferro Blanco uh, rolls out the red carpet. They still welcome our poker run stopovers here and lunches. And uh, we're working with them on some dates for 2019 to find the best time when we can bring Florida Power Boat Club here and really enjoy these facilities and amenities.
We've got our day pretty much timed out perfectly uh, with an arrival here shortly after 12 noon and about a two-hour lunch stopover. If you're moving out of Ferro Blanco by 2 o'clock or 2.30 latest, you're in perfect shape to have plenty of daylight, to have a nice cruise into Key West. Remember, we want to get all the boats to Key West by about 4.30 p.m. It's November. The days are short. It's dark by about 5.30 p.m. So we want to have that one hour of daylight, that special window to get situated back uh, down in Key West. So everybody's getting back on plane for that last uh, 52 miles here heading to Key West. They're going to run a little bit on the inshore circuit. They're going to head out at either the Seven Mile Bridge or they're going to go out at the Baya Honda Bridge at mile marker 37 and run offshore for the final leg into Key West. Quick shout out to Darren and Danielle Peters. Uh, we had a sneak peek of this boat just a little earlier in the show. They came all the way from Ontario with this big 46 Outer Limits, trailered it all the way from Ontario. That's a long way, guys, I can tell you. But happy to have them on the event and hope that we get them back again next year in this team stress relief. And campaigning their new skater, Greg Harris and Yvonne Alleman in this 32 skater, mad props. They had a, an active thunder for a number of years, and they decided it was time to go into the cat play. They got this 32 skater, and they got it running good as they head out onto the open water for the final leg to Key West. And just a quick glimpse here over to the right of your screen. That's uh, boat number three of the Oklahoma team. Uh, Derek Walkup and his group with Plan B. This 42 Cigarette Huntress is the ideal platform for all of the extra people. Today, it's not a lot. Just a couple of them on board as they head for Key West. Say hi to Michael and Nicole Pierce uh, from Louisiana. Uh, Bill Pyburn on board. This 38-foot skater, pure platinum. Uh, so I think Michael tagged out in this boat. Bill sold it to him, but I think Bill came with the package, so he's on board today. Good win competition, 1800s, uh, big power and a fast skater. And it looks like all the skaters, uh, they must have all texted each other and said, let's all leave together and put on a show. As Robert Lockyer dials in his 32 skater, getting ready for that final ride to Key West. Uh, I know that he's recently repowered it with those Mercury Racing Verado 400Rs. Says he loves the new power, and it really breathes some life into this 32 skater. Love the paint and graphics on the boat. Uh, Robert, good to have you back, and have a safe ride to Key West. Say hi real quick to Roger and Pam Anderson from Texas in their 39 Nortec triple Mercury Verados, one of many on the run. I think Nortec is really vying for that position as a top manufacturer represented on the roster. I believe with close to 24 Nortecs, they're going to take home that manufacturer's cup. A couple more center consoles uh, dueling up here for the ride. On the right, the yellow boat is uh, John and Tracy Wittenberger and their 36-foot Sonic uh, team on the rocks. They've been hardcore veterans all year. I think they've been on at least four, maybe five poker runs in 2017, capping it off here with the Key West Poker Run. Uh, and i got to thank them for their great support throughout the year. On the left, that's a Sensation 34 CCX. A sponsor boat represented by Jared and Heather Morris from Iowa. Uh, they jumped on the Sensation team a few years back. Good to have them back on the run. And here's a nice 42-foot uh, fountain. Uh, 2007 edition, uh, 42, Twin Mercury Racing, 600 SCs. Chris and Jennifer Brandt, all the way from Ontario, uh, they came down together with that other Outer Limits we just saw earlier. So they're a long way from home, and it's their first run with pain relief, this 42 fountain. And let's say hi to the proud owner of this uh, Tomcat, a very popular 46 skater from the Lake Michigan area. Uh, I've seen this boat on the uh, Poker Runs Up in Charlevoix. 
uh, the Boyne Thunder event. This is Todd and Danielle Fountain. Um, boat is powered by Mercury Racing 1350s. Uh, was formerly owned by Ron Zolak, and he sold it to Todd. Uh, what a great-looking boat. I just love the paint job. I love the way this boat looks. It's spectacular in every way. And it looks like we've got our 30-plus boats now all leaving Faro Blanco and getting up on plane to make that final leg into Key West. This is the third segment of the run, so this is how this one works. It's a little different than the previous two. We have uh, two options here. You can take a short ride to the Seven Mile Bridge and make a left turn and exit through the Moser Channel out to the ocean side. Or you can stay on the bay side for about 12 or 13 miles and make your exit at Baya Honda. It's a little bit more of a tricky course to go that way, but it does give you that extra few miles of protected water before you head out into the open ocean. So a little time here with the chopper to close in on some of our teams uh, before they head back. Let's catch up now with Michael and Nicole Pierce in this uh, Team Pure Platinum. 388 skater with the Goodwin Competition 1800s. Uh, Bill Pyburn on board. Looks like they're going to take the uh, Bay route, uh, at least for a little ways. Uh, probably going to go out at Baya Honda. I know that that course is probably mapped into that GPS because it's done it many, many times. Got to love this boat. Beautiful graphics. Uh, nicely laid out. Uh, when Bill built this boat, he took his time and did it the way he wanted to do it. Uh, and it's nice to see uh, Bill and Mike enjoying the great performance of this skater. And it looks like they decided to take the turn and go out the Moser Channel. Probably a good choice because you can look how nice it is out in the ocean today. The winds are so light uh, that the conditions in the ocean are really no different than they are in the bay waters. So if that's the case, I always recommend to go out through Moser Channel and get this scenic shot of the Seven Mile Bridge. That, my friends, is the money shot. Going through the Seven Mile Bridge and getting that rooster tail and that vapor trail, it really is a money shot. And for any of you who can do it, if you see the chopper, that's when you want to get your shot because this is the kind of scenic shot we love to show on our YouTube videos and, of course, uh, in the magazine as well. Now we're catching up with Bo and Tiffany Ramfro in their 36-foot skater, uh, Team Dirty Money. They're also veterans with this event. Uh, they've had this skater now for at least a couple of years. Uh, came out first on the Emerald Coast Poker Run, but they've had a lot of boats with the club. They still own a big 48-foot Fountain Express, but it stays back at home in Georgia. And uh, they've got also a center console to keep at their new home in Pompano Beach. So they're a really big boat family, uh, but they love the skater for poker runs. and. Uh, just getting things up on plane. Hey girls, having fun back there? Uh, but uh, looks like they're just getting the boat dialed in. Let's see where they go, if they're gonna go up the Moser Channel or if they're gonna run down through by a Honda. And it looks like, oh, uh, yet another option. They're gonna go through the Knight's Key Cut. So this is a very narrow cut. Watch closely if you wanna get some local knowledge. You can turn your boat and you can cut really close to this, uh, to the bridge here, close to the land. And uh, it's called the Knight's Key Pass. You turn through here and it goes right out to the ocean, but you gotta turn soon, Bo, come on, gotta go soon, because why? There's a big sandbar just off to the starboard side here, and a lot of people hit it by accident. In fact, you can sort of pick it up from the helicopter. You'll see a little bit of shallow water coming into frame here shortly, and right about here. So they did okay, they missed it, they're good, it's high tide, <laughs> and now they're out into the open ocean, and you can see how calm the waters are as they head out for their ride to Key West. Some great helicopter flying and some great camera work as we zoom in on a cockpit close-up 
uh, Josh and Terry Ann Pierce, their first uh, Key West Poker Run, all the way from Kansas with this 2,000, you get that? A 2,000 year, 42 foot fountain with a pair of Mercury 502s. Team the animals. Uh, well, girls, I mean, there's two of you and there's like five dudes, so I guess the dudes are the animals, because, uh, but uh, I hope they behave, girls. It looks like they're having fun today. They've got their hands up, they're waving at the chopper, and they're gonna point this fountain towards Key West for the final leg, about 52 miles as they head down to Key West on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Off in the background now, another V bottom, this one a Hustler, 38 foot slingshot. Coincidentally, another 2000 model year boat. So we've got a couple of boats here, 17 year old boats. Alan Chase from New York is a 38 Hustler slingshot, pair of custom built 725 horsepower engines, which I know would push this boat really super fast because this boat went like stink with 500 back in the day when it first came out. So with 700 aside, I think it's probably easily a 100 to 110 mile an hour boat. Enjoying the ride here, all pumped up for their final leg to Key West. And uh, glad to have you guys on board and a shout out to you guys for wearing your life jackets. That's important, it's part of our safety program. And I love it when you guys follow the guidelines and do the right thing. And we're gonna be close to wrapping up this segment real soon, but let's spend a little bit of time with our official pace boat for today's run. It's actually the official chase boat because we're in a sport boat class with David Berg on board this 43 Midnight Express Open. Uh, but I do wanna thank David uh, for being a great supporter of the club. He started years ago in a Sonic and made his way into this center console and I know he's really happy about it. He normally has a really big crew with a lot of friends and family on board, so this is the ideal platform. A 43 foot open by midnight is one of their most popular models. It's got a 12 foot six beam, weighs in at about 16,000 pounds and uh, carries about 450 gallons of fuel stock. Of course, these are custom built boats. So if you wanna have more fuel capacity, you can. And you're gonna see, you know, later in the show or future episodes, a lot more guys are putting on the 400 Rs and even going to five motors. But enough about the specs. How about how much fun we have on these events and look at how much fun they're having on this Midnight Express. Of course, uh, myself and uh, Ryan, my videographer, and our two models, Kayla and Rochelle, are already off the boat. We got off in Marathon at Ferro Blanco and headed back to Miami, but David and his crew are gonna enjoy the, the final leg here to Key West. And uh, thanks to David uh, for giving us a great ride today. Thanks to Midnight Express for jumping on board as a sponsor. And all of our sponsors are gonna be duly mentioned throughout the series of these next several episodes uh, featuring coverage of the 25th annual Key West Poker Run. But this is the money shot, guys. It doesn't get much better than this as these two boats, the Midnight Express, and I believe that's Justin in his power quest following us, or following David, uh, heading out through the Moser Channel. And I'm sure that you'd all agree with me that these video clips and the still photos uh, that depict these scenic shots uh, through these landmark locations in the Florida Keys, they really, you know, truly become souvenir images of great memories for all of you who have been able to attend this Key West Poker Run. And, you know, think about the 25 years and the, the hundreds of boats and thousands of boats and tens of thousands of people who have done this event with the club over the years. They've gone through these very same waters and passed through these very same bridges and you know, it just keeps getting better and better all the time. Uh, after 25 years of doing this event, I can't say that it gets any old, older for me. It really doesn't. It's just, it's always new. It's fresh people, new members, uh, older classic boats like this 97 Power Quest and brand new hot rods, uh, you know, from our sponsors. I mean, it's it's all good, and I just enjoy seeing all of you uh, out here in Florida enjoying the Florida boating lifestyle. Once again, Justin Boltzma, all the way from Michigan in his 38-foot Power Quest. Love the graphics and I love the spirit. Once again, like I said earlier, one of the youngest guys in the club and driving one of the oldest boats on the Key West Poker Run. That's the kind of stuff I love to see and I wanna see it happen over and over again. So thanks to everybody who joined us for the 25th annual Key West Poker Run. We've just had a great time watching the Wednesday departure group heading down to Key West, but it hasn't even started. We've only seen a tip of the iceberg because today was a 35 boat event and starting on our next episode, we're gonna be back in Miami 
uh, gathering up the Thursday group, which is over 130 boats heading from Miami to Key West. So plenty more here uh, from the Key West Poker Run, celebrating 25 years with the Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, we're going to get things kicked off at Hallover Marine Center, head down through Miami, and stop off at Grove Harbor and pick up a huge pack of boats that will take that 170-mile scenic ride from Miami to Key West. This is Stu Jones. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with segment three with feature coverage of the 25th annual Key West Poker Run presented by Mercury Racing.